In shocking news, Roger Penske decided against doing something fun. Not only did Roger Penske decide against doing something fun once, he decided against doing something fun twice because Roger Buzz Killington Penske over here just refuses to do anything fun. He had the opportunity to not only run Kyle Larson in the Indianapolis 500, but also to run Ryan Blaney in the Indianapolis 500, and he passed on doing programs for both drivers. It would have been great for the Indianapolis 500 to get in two of NASCAR's most recent champions, Larson the 2021 champ and Blaney the 2023 champ, to the greatest spectacle in racing. It's already the most prestigious race in the world. Why not add two bigger stars to that event? It would have been fantastic for the crossover. NBC would have loved it. NASCAR probably wouldn't have promoted it that much, a little bit, outside of like doing what they're doing with Kyle Larson, but it would have been great for motorsports in general, especially in a time where we continually talk about how we want to see drivers make the crossover, try a different series, not just test a car, go out there and actually race the car, do a Shane Van Gisbergen, do a Kurt Busch when he went over to IndyCar, try things out, do something different, and Roger Penske's like, we cannot have that much fun, which is on brand for Roger Penske, especially if you followed him since he bought IndyCar uh, and the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. I will say this, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is far nicer than it ever previously was. Shout out to those nice bathrooms, the paved parking lots, getting rid of the gravel, everything when they have mentioned Penske Perfect, Indianapolis is about as Penske Perfect as they're going to get it at this point, and it's one of the best motorsports facilities in the country. Having said all that, Roger just doesn't like to have fun or do things that might be a little bit risky, which is probably why he's a good businessman, right? He doesn't take unnecessary risk, he's rather bland, he's super conservative, and he only makes moves when he wants to, which is his prerogative, it's his money at the end of the day. But he was approached by Rick Hendrick to say, hey, would you wanna partner up with me, Hendrick and Penske, coming together, a molding of two of the world's best racing teams to feel Kyle Larson in the Indianapolis 500? And Roger Penske said, I can't do it. We need to make sure that our three cars are running good at the 500, which in fairness, they hadn't won since 2013. Uh, obviously they won this past season uh, when race control made an absolute mockery of this race and Joseph Newgarden won on the last lap. Although that still should have been Marcus Erickson going back to back for the first time since Elio did it. We're not going to get on soapbox. We're not getting into it. We're not. We're just not. But he had the opportunity to run Kyle Larson and he passed on it, which honestly, like I get why he said that because they were running pretty poorly in the Indianapolis 500. But at the end of the day, it's still Kyle Larson. It's still an opportunity to sell a ton of merch. And maybe Kyle Larson doesn't fit that Penske perfect mold, right? But running him at Indianapolis is still massive. It's already had an impact on ticket sales. We've heard Doug Bowles and Roger Penske say that there's an uptick in ticket sales for 2024. The amount of papaya and blue merch that you are going to see in the grandstands come May is going to be astronomical. Having Kyle Larson run in the 500 is something that basically every team on the grid would have like absolutely clamored for. And Roger Penske, being Roger Penske, like he's Roger Penske, he can do this. He's like, nah, we, we don't, we don't need it. So obviously he passed on the program. Hendrick Motorsports went over to Air McLaren and teamed up with them and they'll now field Kyle Larson in what they're dubbing the Hendrick 1100 uh, this coming May. Then we get to the NASCAR end of the season awards banquet in Nashville this week, and Ryan Blaney says, hey, I approached Roger Penske about running the Indianapolis 500 as well, and he said, pump the brakes on it, because apparently, according to Roger, if we put Blaney in it, then everybody's going to want to come to Indianapolis, and I don't know who he means by everyone. Does he mean like all the cup drivers? Because when Kyle Larson does it in May of 2024, he'll be only the third driver in the last 20 years to attempt this feat. So it's not like there's a ton of people coming over that are like, hey, we want to run the double. Ryan Blaney in the race would be pretty interesting, right? Again, he's the most recent NASCAR Cup Series champion. He doesn't have any open wheel background, not even on dirt. Is he a guy that could be competitive? Ah, who knows? But I definitely think that he's a guy that could go out there and give the car a good run. And again, it would be really interesting to see because as fans, I think we all want to know how drivers in certain series would do in other series. And Ryan Blaney is not a guy I ever expected to want to get into an Indy car, right? Racing an Indy car is a little sketchy at times. And Blaney just doesn't seem like a guy that's going to take that risk. I did see somebody say that they didn't trust Ryan Blaney to run at 230 mile an hour, which that honestly doesn't make any sense to me considering this guy is one of the best super speedway racers NASCAR has. Like he apparently seems to thrive in these situations where he's stuck really close to other cars. He has absolutely thrived in those situations. So having him race in Indianapolis 500 doesn't concern me at all. 
but this just kind of goes on this long list of Penske not wanting to do fun things, right? He had Sam Hornish in the Cup Series, could have done a double duty with Sam Hornish if he wanted to, uh, running for both Penske and C in both series, and they elected not to do it. At one point, he had Juan on the IndyCar roster. They could have done the crossover there as well, and they decided not to do it, which is really unfortunate. He maybe could have done it with AJ Allmendinger, but like 2013 was a weird time for AJ. AJ still had a really good shot of winning that Indy 500 that year, and if his seatbelts didn't come loose, and if it was maybe that happened in like the final 10 laps, AJ Allmendinger could be an Indy 500 champion. It's really unfortunate that that happened, but it just kind of goes to show that Roger just doesn't want to do things that are fun or a potential risk, which Again, I can kind of understand. I can kind of get behind that, right? Tony Stewart famously said that the only way he was going back to the Indianapolis 500 was if Roger Penske was going to field a car for him. And I think that was the safest thing he ever could have said because he knows Roger would never do a program like that. He doesn't typically do one-offs unless it's for somebody like Juan before he, you know, after he went full-time with him. And he, I mean, the guy won't even do one-off at the Indianapolis 500 for Elio Castroneves who brought him three Indy 500 titles. And he's like, ah, we just can't make it work right now. So it's not that I'm complaining that Roger doesn't do fun things. It's just that I wish he would, because I think it would be better for motorsport overall if he would do crossover things like this. And thankfully, there's teams out there that are willing to take a risk and, and do something like this. You know, Aaron McLaren being the one this year that's willing to try it, Andretti back in 2014 with Kurt Busch. And then we've, of course, had... Ganassi do it with Tony Stewart and others along the way and it's it's fun to see crossover programs like this to see drivers go out and race in different cars just wish Roger would get on board with it but I mean that follows the Penske perfect brand right so that's unfortunate but hopefully Ryan Blaney does at least get an IndyCar test at some point Brad got an IndyCar test at Road America I believe it was Hopefully we can get Ryan into one at some point just to see what he can do and if he can feel it out and everything like that. But hopefully we do get to see more crossovers from motorsports. And Kyle Larson said this week at the banquet as well, he'd like to see Joseph Newgarden make the, the crossover and come race the Coke 600 because he said if he feels like NASCAR guys are always the one going over to IndyCar to race the 500 and no IndyCar drivers making their way down to race the Coke 600 the same weekend, obviously if they're doing the double. Uh, and yeah, honestly, I'd like to see it. There's a number of guys in an in IndyCar that could probably make that switch. It's just, it's different, right? I think it's easier to go from a really heavy stock car to a lightweight open wheel car than it is to go from a lightweight open wheel car to a heavy stock car. Dario Franchi can be the perfect person to explain how difficult that is. But we've seen plenty of guys be able to make that transition and be really competitive. AJ Allmendinger, Juan Montoya, just to name a couple that were made the transition pretty well. I mean, even Sam Hornish did at that. Should have been an Xfinity Series champion, Sam Hornish, if Penske would actually just have used their team cars correctly. Still baffling to me. Either way, like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.